Hi everybody, I'm Greg Fischel. Welcome to bonus weather video number five for this week. And we're gonna be talking about temperature trends over the next week to 10 days and whether or not there's any chance that some of those uh, obnoxious temperature numbers we've been seeing in Texas uh, this week uh, could spread eastward and affect us. So far this summer, we haven't had any big time heat waves. And I talked about the fact that until the pattern changes, it's going to be tough for us to have more than a day or two of really hot weather in a row. But let's look into this in a little bit more detail here. So what we're going to do is take a look at the European Ensemble mean. And here we're looking at the 5,000 foot temperatures compared to average. Now, you may you know, ask yourself, well, you know, I don't live at 5,000 feet. Why do I care? Well, it seems just from looking at data over the years that the European Ensemble and the operational model, for that matter, have a cold bias at the surface, okay? The, the numbers almost always run low, especially on a sunny day. But at 5,000 feet, uh, it seems to do a better job. And I, and I think that's because the surface temperature depends on a lot of things. It has to take into account the type of soil, the amount of vegetation, all of these different very small scale effects. And you don't have any of that at 5,000 feet. You're basically just looking at weather systems moving along and whether or not the air is cooling or warming or rising or falling. And so all of that uh, is a little bit easier to call. So that's the method behind my madness in showing you this. So as far as uh, today goes, uh, you can see that there's this below normal pocket over the upper level or un underneath the upper level low, which is no surprise. Then as we head toward tomorrow, that area shrinks and is not as intense, okay? So we should be able to warm up a couple of degrees tomorrow over what we saw today. And then some of these darker oranges begin to move eastward ahead of the next cold front. So we think we'll be in the low, possibly some areas in the mid 90s by Sunday and also on Monday. But notice, here's the next push of cool air. Now, this is the push that may set off the strong thunderstorms I talked about in the daily weather update Monday afternoon and Monday night. Then, as we head toward Tuesday, now, if you'll take this literally, it still has this at normal, but we're gonna have quite a bit of, more than likely, leftover cloud cover Tuesday, and so that's going to affect the surface temperature and hold it down. So that's why I'm going for mid 80s on Tuesday. Excuse me, then on Wednesday, some of, this, some of these blue colors try to get into North Carolina, so we're not talking about any extreme cold here or 15 degrees below normal, just cooler than it's gonna be on Sunday and Monday. And then we start to see these oranges and the nasty reds and even some tans here beginning to spread eastward on Thursday. And by the time we get to Friday, next Friday, June 30th, we're not into the really extreme tan colors, but we're getting pretty dark here on the orange and the red. So this is why I'm pushing us up into the mid 90s next Friday. And then just for fun, looking ahead three days beyond that, notice how those colors lose their intensity as we head toward July 1, July 2, and July 3. In fact, even Texas, the, the colors aren't all that bad. Now, part of that could be due to the fact that there is uh, yet another one of these upper level lows dropping out of Canada, but now it looks like this one, the one that would be in this time frame, uh, instead of heading for the eastern U.S., could actually drop more straight south into the central U.S. And if that happens, then that would be a nice break from the intense heat down the road for Texas and much of the nation's midsection. And of course, with the trough sitting off to our west, it's gonna be hard for us to get really hot too. So I think if we get real hot late next week, and I think there's a decent chance we will, uh, that it's only gonna be a one or two day thing, and then we'll be right back to around average. So again, the overall pattern has not shifted enough to get us into one of those big time heat waves. Uh, the precipitation forecast, and I always have to take myself out of the picture because this is just a big graphic, okay? So notice that tomorrow, you know, the ensemble mean doesn't go up all that much. And so this is why I'm just thinking widely scattered thunderstorms tomorrow. On Sunday, it doesn't change at all. And so that's why I think Sunday, or it, it's consistent with my idea of Sunday being a completely dry day. And then you do see this ramp up here late Monday and Monday night, and that's in association with the next front that could produce some strong storms. And then once we get to Tuesday, Wednesday, and beyond, it's pretty much flat, which uh, would indicate that uh, after we get past uh, Monday night and early Tuesday morning, uh, we should be pretty much home free for the rest of the week, at least until Friday. So that's uh, the method behind my madness on the forecast. And uh, let me, well, first thing I'll do is I'll put myself back in the picture because I never want to say goodbye to you 
without you being able to see me saying goodbye to you. So there are the credits, and that is the bonus weather video for today. Uh, the daily weather update is already posted. Uh, the tropical weather update will be posted very, very soon. Still a couple of systems to watch in the Atlantic, but at this point, no threat to the United States whatsoever. But I'll go into more detail on that on that video. All right, folks, you all have a good weekend. We'll talk to you soon. See you later.